Today I want to see if we can wrap up this tour of uh, Decoder Pro. Let's uh, open the test FT locomotive file that I've been working with. I uh, have it set up on the programming track today. So let's go ahead and proceed with that as soon as it uh, opens up. Okay, let's begin with the, uh, the test FT file that I've been working with uh, for the last few videos. Um, we have it open now to the basic roster entry that we've done in the past. Uh, we've worked up through um, analog consist controls. Let's go ahead and go into the advanced uh, pane. You can see here it, it uh, covers some things that you probably won't use very much of. The CV unlock and locking feature capability, packet timeout uh, information. These are things that you probably will never use. Uh, you can look them up just by, uh, this one is controlled by CV11, the packet timeout. So look that up in the manual and, and uh, get a feeling for what that does. The only thing on here really then is the independent brake rate. This is another one of those things where you can control the brake rate um, in a similar fashion as you would for the, um, the train brake in another uh, pane that I showed you. So this just gives you another way of, of, of controlling the, the brake system on these uh, decoders. Um, let's move on then to sound. Sound is a big one. There's a lot here that you can do. You can change uh, how quickly the, the locomotive responds. So you can set it up so that the RPM increases anywhere from um, you know, each step all the way, or even manual notching with, you know, completely uh, controlled by the throttle, all the way up to uh, 50 every 15 speed steps. Uh, seven seems to be a pretty good setting for this. Uh, that way you're halfway through the, um, uh, through the uh, throttle before, um, uh, before you run out of speed step increases. So it seems to be a pretty good uh, approach to this. Uh, the interlocking, um, whether or not uh, you have manual notching control and uh, the locomotive will not move until the engine starts. Engine auto start enable, you can set it up so that you start it or it starts up by itself. Um, dynamic brake override, again you can control the uh, how the dynamic brake sound turns on and off and, and whether the RPMs uh, of a locomotive drop to idle or match four or whatever, full stay at full speed. You have complete control over how dynamic braking responds. Okay, the important stuff though is obviously setting up the prime mover. We've got several options here on the economy, um, the type of air horn. There's a wide selection of air horns available uh, on these. Um, you can control whether what you want the short horn to be. So you can have a different horn for the short horn than for the uh, um, for the long horn. And the bell. We can go with an EMD type bell, medium fast, fast, slow, medium, slow, uh, GE bells, Alco bells, brass bells, heavy brass, you name it. Um, I'm going to stick with my medium fast here. We get back to that. Uh, you can control whether the grade crossing bell is enabled so that uh, when you uh, push the grade crossing um, uh, whistle, the bell dongs for you. Um, the air compressor, you can select the type of air compressor, the generic or the GE whooper. Um, the coupler select, this is how heavy a sound you get when the uh, coupler is activated. Um, coupler release function polarity, whether or not the sound occurs when it's turned on or turned off. Uh, the number of coach door slams. You might want to have that turned completely off if you're running a freight train. Um, quiet mode timeouts, so the number of seconds um, it takes before the uh, sound completely turns off after the timeout period has, has elapsed. So you can uh, throttle down the locomotive and turn all the functions off, and then it will automatically uh, shut the sound off. The poppet valve release rate, you can control that. Sound levels, 
Sound levels are pretty straightforward. You can use this slider to change the master volume, or you can actually go in here and type it in. So you got it both ways. So you control all of the different sounds. The master control, control controls the sound uh, for level for everything coming out of the speaker. These are the individual sound controls for your air horn, your bell, your prime mover, all of the different functions or sounds anyway have a, a slider control. So you can just go in here and make those changes. Let's move on to the CV. Now this is a very powerful one. If you know what CV you want to change, you can simply go in here, change it like that, and then do a write. I'm going to change this back before I forget. And this shows that its state, it's from file. You know, it, could have, it could have read it from the decoder. And you can actually sit here and you can click on each one of these and read what the value is in the decoder. So this allows you to uh, read what's in the decoder, make individual CV changes instead of using the, uh, the individual controls in the panes. The equalizer, this is like the equalizer on a stereo setup where you can control the frequency response of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sliders here. So it allows you to control the bass all the way through the mid-range and up to the treble uh, response of your speaker. And you can maximize it. And it really does make a difference. Uh, you can also just go in here. You can go with the flat response, which is off. You can go with micro speakers, small speakers, large speakers. And you can set it up so that it's a user adjustable. And you can go in here and set this up however you want. Um, very straightforward to use. I use this a lot for uh, for my installations with the Ekonami and with the uh, Tsunami 2 decoders. Again, fairly straightforward. That's all that this uh, pane allows you to do. ASC, automatic sound control. You can have the automatic bell enabled or disabled, which I prefer to do. Automatic brake squeal. That's a very nice function if you like to have the brake squeals automatically for you. And you can set this up to work in analog mode as well. And you can control the uh, auto bell set point at what speed step it comes on. Um, this is controlled by CV193, so you can look that up. Uh, the, auto bell, uh, the time for the auto bell to stay on after it uh, starts. Uh, the brake squeal sensitivity, okay, so you can control um, when the brake squeal, how often the brake squeal will come on and um, how much of a change in the throttle is required in order for this to occur. So it's that, that's the most handy one here. Um, the legacy function, I showed you about the legacy function back when I was talking about function maps. I prefer to use the new uh, function map capability. It's, it's just a lot more flexible. Um, finally, the various ID functions, as they say in here, some of these are uh, set at the factory, and you can't change them, but um, they will uh, appear here. Um, it's a read-only function. Uh, well, that pretty much wraps it up for the uh, overall tour. Uh, in future videos, I'll be going back and showing you how to, how to do individual uh, programming. So, and every month that I do a decoder installation uh, article for the DCC corner column, I will then uh, post a video showing the exact uh, steps that I used to program that decoder for that video.